Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Take a Deep Breath podcast, back on the main Take a Deep Breath channel. Um, It's uh, three years since we kicked off the podcast with James Nestor. Where's three years gone? Unbelievable. Um, And I'm 100 episodes in now. We've released about 70 of them. I've still got 30 in the bank. Um, But my good friend, Jesse Coomer, said to me the other day, "Why uh, why don't I interview you? So I was like, oh, yes, please. So what you're about to see or hear is um, my first being interviewed podcast on this channel. We'll talk about how the channel started, how uh, the podcast started, a little bit about my life, a little bit about my favorite breathing techniques, about the future of breath, about my client success and a load of other stuff. So um, look forward to introducing you to myself. A um, couple of quick messages. The reason I've got this out now, we've literally just finished recording it like a second ago. It's like 8 p.m. here in the UK on the 12th of April. Tomorrow, 13th of April, tickets go on sale for the Airheads Masterclass. If you've not heard about this yet, OMG, we've got James Nestor, Patrick McEwen, Melissa Varanich, myself, um, Tom Granger, Jesse Coomer, and a whole host of unbelievable people. We've built one of the best breathwork masterclasses ever that's existed because we've got the best people teaching it. It's live on the 25th of April and uh, tickets are available tomorrow. First 100 people that get a ticket also get access to my Functional Breathing Essentials course, which is down at $500. And the ticket price for the whole event is less than $200. So really big value, first 100 people. We expect to sell out fast. We can only hold so many people on the on the live uh, site that we're using for this. Um, so it's 25th of April for a week. Um, it's all the best breathwork instructors. Each day is structured. So you've got the mechanics of breath on day one, and then you've got like the nervous system on day two, you've got breathing light on day three, you've got intermittent hypoxia on day four, and all this stuff. We're going to explain it all. So if you're brand new to breath or you watch my breath cast, you probably know a few things about breath. It's all going to be there. And it's all recorded as well. So you, if you can't make the whole thing or all of it, don't worry, we're going to record it all and you've got lifetime access all for less than $200. So um, just wanted to get that in there. I thought it was quite good timing. We just finished this podcast right now. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. You know, we're, we're 100 episodes in now to this podcast. We've moved it to the other channel. So it has its own breathcast channel. Um, 3,000 of you have signed up to that channel. There's 160,000 of you here. So if a few more of you could go and click the subscribe button on there, that would be ace as well. But nevertheless, we've got all the guests on there. They're all on iTunes, they're all on Spotify. Um, if you listen to this and you can leave me a five-star review, that would be incredible because it means that more people get to see the podcast as well or hear the podcast. Um, and yeah, just a big thank you. You know, I started this journey seven years ago with Wim Hof in Poland. It was World Breathing Day yesterday and you know you have no idea do you of like booking a plane ticket somewhere and what the ripple effects of that are going to be it's pretty special um and here we are 160,000 strong imagine what that we would all look like if we all got on a, a football pitch together and did some breath work It'd blow my mind um so thank you very much from me um enjoy the conversation with me and jesse and uh, I hope to see some of you at my Airheads Masterclass. And if you're watching this way, way into the future, um, there'll be a way that you can click on the airheadsmasterclass.com and you'll be able to buy a copy of this. But it will be more expensive than the live version, just a heads up. So if you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, click on the link, less than $200, get yourself signed up and uh, come and breathe with some of the best breathwork experts on the planet. All right, here is Mike Mayer. Hello, everybody. I am Mike Mayer. Oh, wait a minute. I am not. I am here. My name is Jesse Coomer, and I am excited to be on the Breathcast as kind of a stand in for Mike, uh, because Mike deserves his own time. We need to get to know him a little bit better. And over the past few weeks, uh, you've gotten to know a lot of people from the Breath Source app. So, you know, this is one of the biggest things in the world of breath work that I can recall. And we've gotten to really meet a lot of new people. I was on here and he was asking me some questions. And so it's only, it's only right, Mike, that, that you get to have some questions asked toward you. Maybe, maybe we're going to grill you. I don't know. Maybe I've got some tough questions uh, (laughs) that the viewers demand. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, we're going to spend some time just spending a little bit of time getting to know Mike a little bit better. One thing I've, you know, in my own channel, I, I, it never fails that a lot of times we don't 
we don't really talk about some of the things we kind of glaze over those. We've got our other subjects we're talking about. Hey, I want to tell you about this technique or this thing I learned. And sometimes we don't ever actually get a chance to talk about our own journey. And so today we're going to spend some time getting to know Mike a little bit better. So Mike, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. You know, um, I've been thinking about doing something like this for a while. And I've, one of my biggest... Um, heroes is a guy called chris ryan he's an american author who wrote sex at dawn and civilized to death and he has a podcast called tangentially speaking and he has a segment in there called atoma which it stands for talking out my ass which i love and i was going to steal like that, that and change it to talking out my airway so you might see a toma <laughs> from me in the future <laughs> but i think this is this is a, a first by the way you're the first guest host on the on the podcast now and we just had our three-year birthday like last week or something like that so oh, it's, man. Uh, it's the timing man this is big and I'm, I'm really i'm really thrilled to 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 get to know you actually a little bit better for those of you guys you know who are who are watching listening and if you're familiar with with either one of us or both of us uh, we we work tangentially. We work together with the 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 Breath uh, Source app, and of course, we're in this space. One of the things that actually Mike said not too long ago, and it really resonated with me, is just how lonely this business can be. And it's so nice to get to know other people. So I've not really had a chance to get to know you as much as I've wanted to get to know you, Mike. So this this is going to be just a fun conversation for me to have. And I, I'd like to just take it all back because I remember. I remember in the early days of of my YouTube channel, and then I saw your YouTube channel kind of pop up. And you know, I know that when when a person becomes so passionate about something, they're like, "Okay, I've got to start a channel. I've got to sp start spreading this. This is something I'm really passionate about." It wasn't day one, right? That wasn't on the first day you found out about breath work. The first day you found out about the topic, it's like there was a process that led to that. So. How did that happen for you? What what was your process of learning about, finding out about breath work that led you to starting this channel? Yeah, um, cool. big question, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The, you know, you know, you say the, the short version is I did the Wim Hof, I got back, I made some breathing exercise, put one YouTube, and and that that's kind of the start. But the, the truth is, I was always looking for my own side hustle for years. So I was obsessed with Tim Ferriss and the Four Hour Work Week. I hated working corporate. Um, I always felt like a you know square peg in a round hole. I never fit in. Even though ironically, I was able to like move up the ladder, that's made it even a bit more worse. Um, so I never really <laughs> fit in another one. And, and to be honest, I think I think like most people that work in corporations feel that way. We just don't talk about it that often. We're yeah. not in a suit for like eight hours, not moving our bodies, all shallow breathing, all panicking all the time because we're in trouble constantly. I heard somebody say that if you take the word stress and change it to I'm scared. It gives the whole other meaning. So, so I'm stressed. Or so I'm scared. Oh, how's it? Yeah. I'm really scared. You know, that really puts that. And that's how I felt the whole whole time. So um, my side hustles varied. I don't think I've shared all these. I uh, was trying to do hampers at one point. So I would get these like baskets and buy beauty products and stick them on eBay. That didn't work. I, uh, what else? Had a car washing business or a young guy around knocking on doors and wash people's cars. And that last, you know, I was quite young at that point. So I always enjoyed me and my own boss. And then I had a wedding video business. So I'd film weddings. I filmed 50 to 100 weddings. Um, oh, wow. I could almost give you word for word what the vicar's going to say. And it really took the shine off a wedding for me because you really got to see behind the scenes, the stress, the the cookie cutter approach to it. And I just got a bit burnt out filming weddings because it was just every day. You don't even talk to people. You're just behind the camera. You're there to document it. Um, and I would put some stuff on YouTube. There's still a few videos there of a few of the weddings I filmed. Um, and then I kind of did a bit of corporate work, corporate videos, but all the time had the day job, always in the day job. Um, but always thinking, how do I break free? How do I get out? I'll be listening to loads of podcasts. i will listen to Joe Rogan. I'll hear all these amazing people. I was mm. like, maybe, but I never found my thing. And I always thinking, oh, I, I, what's my thing? You know, everyone's got a thing on these podcasts that I didn't know about breath work. And ironically, when I was um, on the way to the Wim Hof retreat, we get on the bus at the Czech airport and we all go on this bus ride I don't know if you did the same thing and you go all the way back to Poland again. Yeah. It, ironically I had to leave Poland to get to the Czech airport to go back into Poland again to get picked up so I'd take a big anyway um I'm sitting <laughs> the bus, um with my my best friend who's been on this podcast Scott and uh, we made friends there like seven years ago 
And I remember saying to him on the bus on the way out, because he was he's a hypnotherapist. I was like, dude, I really wish I could have a job I could help people. That'd be like the coolest thing in the world. And then just kind of dismissed it, you know. Mm. Um, and then fast forward, Wim Hof, blah, 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 did all that, did all that stuff, found the breath work. But it was it was really going back to um almost like a triangle really of like um things coming together. The breath work, the video production skills, and like the YouTube like knowledge, or or the and then like I guess sprinkle the passion on top of that. But when all those things came together, I knew how to edit. I was very lonely. Nobody else got breath work where I was living at. They all thought <laughs> I was mental. Um and so I made some breathing exercises, put them on YouTube, shared them in the Wim Hof groups. And then and I forgot about it. Just forgot. I remember it got to like a thousand views and a thousand subscribers. Like, holy shit, that's mental. But it's still busy work. Da, da, right. Da. Um, did the Tony Robbins thing. Did that in London. Uh, after 15 years in corporation, I did Tony Robbins. And then I, Tony Robbins got in my head and I was like, I'm going to quit my job. So I went into work on the Monday and I handed note, my notice in, quit my job. And we sold the car and the bed and the house and everything we got rid of. Oh, wow. Uh, and then me and my girlfriend just left the country. This was back end of 2018 because we did this visualization exercise of what happens if you stay in your corporate job how are you gonna feel in like five years how are you gonna feel in 10 mm. years and i was like shit this don't feel good how are you gonna feel in 20 years and you end up crying thinking i need to like you know i need to i never got to sort i never got to see the world and it was my biggest regret so i was like let's do it yeah and then on the on the like, after about three months of constant travel, you're exhausted. I was, I was changing beds every night, different places. It was incredible. But you get to the point where you can't even be bothered taking the photograph. You just get a bit a bit burnt out by that as well. It's like we need to just stop and rest. And so we went to Bali and we just did yoga and relaxed. And I went back to the YouTube thing. And I was like, shit, they've got like ten thousand subscribers now. <laughs> and there's my girlfriend's like, why don't you make some more videos? Why don't you do something about it? And I was like, I actually got loads of time. And that's when I started like hiring like a book because I was too scared to put myself on there. I wouldn't use my own voice. No one wants to listen to oh. me. I wouldn't show my face. Um, so I would hire like a voice artist off Fiverr. You can still go back to this, this lovely American voice. And she already uh. knew Wim Hof. So she already got it. So she was doing the guidance. I was like, paying people to like get the music for me off Fiverr. And so I was building these breathing exercises just in my spare time. And, and then the channel really started to, to take off. And then I had to come back. My dad was not very well, so he came back and got settled back in the UK. He's fine now, but it was a bit, bit, bit touch and go at the time. So we came back home and um, had to get a job. So I went back into the corporate space. Yeah. And I remember okay. about a month in, this is like, this is when the pandemic's on now, just before the pandemic. I'm like, I don't feel good. Like the YouTube thing is not really going anywhere. The job's like, oh, I don't know. And and we just, mm. it's very like cinematic. We had this conversation, me and Nina, in that, the car park of some gym somewhere and the rain's coming down. It's like dark and the rain's smashing the car. Right out of a movie. Right out of a movie. She's like, why don't you make this breath work into a proper business? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, you can do this. And she gave me this like really, really good pep talk. And I was like, yes, let's do it. And we made this decision. This was like probably just before the pandemic. So like February, 2020. But like, let's let's mm -hmm. see what we can do to turn this into a business. I'll stay in my corporate job. I can do probably two years, but I need to get out after that because I wanted to get a house and all that. Sure. Sort of and so we said, right, let's just do it. And so at that point, I then started looking for proper certifications. I became an oxygen advantage coach. I wanted to understand the science. I started the podcast, all that journey. Uh, and then here we are now. It took three years, not two years, but three years later, I was able to quit the job. And then do it. And now so this is it. This is this is the business now. It's full time. Got a baby. Got a house. And got a full time breathwork business. So that's the that's yeah. the slightly longer version of like the last seven years of my life. But that's kind of where it's gone. <laughs> what I love about your story is is you know oftentimes when you ask a breath worker that question, it they will skip over all of the practical parts of it. They'll say, you know, I'm just so passionate. I just want to help people. So I just quit my job and I just decided to do that. And there is so much more to it than just, just like, Hey, I wanted to share, right. You have to think, you know, it, it, especially now when you're daddy, right. And, and you're, you've got a life. How do you make all these things work within a life? And I love, I love that story because I think there's so much of uh, the, of the world that wants to kind of break free and of course, the, the world of breathwork is is this. I mean, that's one of the the, the beauties of breathwork. You are breaking free of a lot of the 
of, of the bounds of, of nervousness and anxiety and all those things. So I love that story. So, so, okay. So you've, you've now, we brought you up to some of kind of your origins. You started off, I think a lot of people start off with Wim Hof and they kind of move their way through. How would, how do you look at breath work now? When, when you look at breath work, is it, um, are, are you looking through like, okay, I could train a person. Cause I know you have, you have uh, a very, uh, very, very successful practice. You have clients. You this is something that, like you said, you're doing this full time. As you approach your clients, are you looking through the lens of of like one specific school, or are you, how how do you approach someone comes to you? Hey, these are the things I'm working on. Um, I, what is your approach to to clients? I guess. Uh, yeah, because because um, yeah, my I really, the client practice is like my favorite thing. So I, yeah. look, I actually work in one on one. That's the that's the big thing. And really, I'm at that point, I only really take on like probably two clients a month because we go really deep. We have a six okay. week program. So to answer that question, I yeah. uh, I, I listened to um, I think it was Sad Guru on uh, Joe Rogan a little while ago, and he says try and take a spanner. To undo the 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 screw you won't be able to do it well use your thumb you're going to make your thumb all bloody you need the right tool for the right you know the right yeah and so i've always used the term toolkit and so i don't have one modality i'm trained in oxygen advantage i've got over the modalities that i'm working on but i i'm at that point now where i've interviewed i've released 70 podcasts but i've interviewed probably about 110 people and each person's got mm. their own version of like, or, or what I like to call flavor of breath works. So everyone's got their own flavor. Well, and I, I like that. something every, I just do a podcast like an hour ago with a wonderful lady from New York. And I can't wait to release that. She was teaching me about body work, um, about nitric oxide being released, not necessarily in the nose, but in other areas using like a tuning fork. Blew my mind, blew my mind. So wow. I learned something from every single one of these people. I get to pick their brains. And so um, I don't have one modality. I, I look at all of the breath work. And so when I work with a client, there's quite a rigorous process that we go through because I need them to, before I take anybody on, I say, are you going to give me 22 minutes a day? Because if I can't get 22 minutes a day, we, there's just no point in working together. I need that. That's the minimum that I need you to find for me in your day and explain all the reasons why. And then we go through a rigorous process of why breath work? Why breath work now? Why would you want to work with me? So I ask them a lot of questions to understand what they're after. What are your top three goals? If you could wave a magic wand, what is it that you really mm. would like to achieve and why? And then I dig a lot deeper. Why is it those three things? So I do a lot of, a lot of coaching with uh, people. This is before we even get to working together, breath assessments, all that jazz. And then what I'll do normally is once we've agreed we're gonna, we are gonna work together, I'll go away and I'll build a completely bespoke through six week package for them. So like a guy I'm working with right now, um, we have we have really tore it right down. It's like, what is it you're after? So there's things around like stress reduction, uh, things around discipline and focus. And then I'm able to go away, do the research. So which breathing techniques really give the best um, impulse control, for example? There are specific breathing techniques, let's say, that do that or lower anxiety. And of course, a lot of stuff comes to functional breathing, you know, slowing down, using yeah. the nose. But then there's the little fluffy bits that I see on top, you know, maybe some people need more help with the biomechanics. So I don't have one tool. I, I, I really... My goal is, I mean, I know there's like different terms to this. I really like the mixed martial arts approach to it. So like there's not one like mix, there's not one martial art which rules them all. I mean, jiu-jitsu is pretty freaking good, but you still need to know how to kick <laughs> and, and all that. So I really, my goal is to like just, and, I, and, and it's something that we'll never do, right? We'll never learn it all. And that's, I'm cool with that. But I always try and have that white belt mentality and go, okay, what else is there? And it's just, and just stay humble as possible. But um yeah, I, I don't have one modality. It really is. The other, the other day, this guy was looking. That's why, in fact, I was texting you. I was like, give me some examples of like energizing exercises. And you've given me some example I, for a client, you know. Yes, that's right. You know, actually, I uh, maybe maybe when we get off air, I'll show you the technique itself. Uh, but yeah, there's there's so much that we can do with breath. So yeah, I, I love I love that that way of the mixed martial arts approach. You know, what really matters is is winning the match in or, or getting those goals. I love that. Now, I, I've got to double back because you mentioned how many interviews you've done. And this is something that you have the most successful podcast in the world on breath work. And it's something that, you know, when I'm when I really admire someone, I, I like to tell them that I'm I'm very proud of them, 
but also very jealous. And that's the best kind of compliment, right? It's like, man, that you did so great. I, I, I wish I could, you know, that is such a great thing. Um, and you, you've, you've got, like you said, 70 that are out, you've interviewed a hundred people. So here's, here's what I guarantee you. A lot of people are wondering out of, out of those, have you, you know, are, are they all awesome? Or, or are there some of them that are just like really far out or, you, you know, do you have any fun stories of like, I didn't publish this one because it was this, you know, any fun stories that you can share? There, there were a couple I didn't publish. There was one guy that went down the anti anti vaxxer route, and I had to just stay well clear from that. And he got very angry, and he was talking about glyphosate a lot, and he just had a really big rant. I can't. I'll tell you off air who it was, and you probably know who it is. I can't. <laughs> okay. I didn't release that one, although I have thought about releasing clips. But we, I think we we're about an hour into the podcast, and we hadn't even spoke about breath work yet. And I was like, just try get him to call, oh, wow. so he could talk about <laughs> rants with me about glyphosate. Anyway. Um, I've had a couple of other ones a bit more controversial. Um, again, I, I can probably share with you off, off air, but um, I think that the most, probably the scariest one I ever heard, and it's not even that scary, but it was scary to me, and I published this one, was the guy that did um, dark retreats where you're in the dark for a week. And for some reason, it just scares the shit out of me. You're doing a conscious collective breath. So mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're eating in the dark, you're pooping in the dark. Already I've got questions. Yeah, um, that's... You know, there's stuff going on. But here's the <laughs> bit. He gets you in a... So I've, I've done, I don't, have you ever done the hot water rebirthing? Have you ever had a crack at uh, Yes. Oh, I, I did hot water uh, vivation. So okay. we're okay. in the same ballpark. Very similar. We're, there, in the, yeah. we're in the same ballpark. He does a hot water rebirthing in the dark on day five or day six uh, with a snorkel. And I've done all the snorkel stuff. And I, now right. I've done it. I know it's a little bit safer than in my head how I thought it. But he says... <laughs> It's just this idea of being in the dark for that long, I don't know, but my eyes didn't stop working. So this, and, and, and actually there's something there that probably says you probably need to go into that. That's probably <laughs> one of the scariest things that I've heard. Um, the lady I had, you know, back in my first, I don't think I've shared this either, back in my first few years of breath work, I, I really didn't have a clue. You know, I just thought those were half method. I didn't know, I made yeah. breathe. I had no idea. And so I started to put the word holotropic on my breathing exercises because I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> and, and the Holotropic Institute, they emailed me and said, this term is copyright. Can you please take it off? And I was like, uh, and I don't know why I did this. I went, yes, I will. Would you like to do a podcast? And they said, yes. So I got this lady on who had trained with Stan, Stan, Stan Groff. I can't Groff, remember. Groff, yeah. And Stan Le Groff. Um, and she came on, and it's one of my top podcasts. She's this wonderful woman. She's an RN. She's a nurse. Um, really humble, but, like, you would just trust her. I, I can't read. She just had this beautiful presence about her. Um, and it's one of my favorite podcasts. And she just was so nurturing, and she spoke about the breath in such a beautiful way, and all the transformations she's seen with her clients, and why she got into it, and the power of it. And it was one of the most happy accidents I ever had from mislabeling the breathing exercise to actually speak <laughs> to one of the top people in the institute. It was, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I think that speaks a lot to some of the, you know, in, in this business, you know, you and I know this, and it's something that not a lot of people know about it. There are a lot of egos. There is a lot of, um, you know, peace and love and joy to the rest of the world, but then total cutthroats behind the scenes. Yes. It is so nice to meet people, especially after you might have accidentally stepped on someone's toes, yeah. you know, and, and they're like, yeah, we'd love to come and explain it. I, I think that speaks a lot to their methodology and, and, and of course, to, to whomever that was. I'll have to go back and watch that. Uh, have you, as you've gone through, I mean, like I said, it, it's, it is a it's a real feat to have accomplished what you've accomplished, especially based off of the story is like, okay, I posted something. I, I was nervous. I didn't want to put my voice on, uh, especially those of us who have heard your voice. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you want your voice on, you know, because you've got a great voice for podcasting, you know, as you've gone through the podcasting, as you've gone through building a breathwork business, would you have any, um, 
you know, advice for a person who's trying to get into, into this space, you know, uh, as, a, as, as far as whether it is developing this as a side hustle, actually, that's how, you know, I, I thought, never thought it would turn out to be a full-time job. Yeah. Or would you, you know, would you have any maybe advice for a person getting into that, the, either the podcasting or YouTube side or, or just the business just as a whole? Yeah, and that's a good question. Um, so on the business as a whole, well, actually this Sunday, so I don't know when this will go out, but this is the 12th of April right now. This Sunday, I'm actually doing a live stream with a, and this is this is the first time I've ever done this. This is with a sales business consultant to help breathwork coaches get more clients. So I'm starting to oh, dip wow. in that water a little bit. So we're going to have this guy on. Um, he's helped me tremendously get clients. Um, and my my instincts around business is, is not good. Whereas this guy's going, this is what you do, this is how you say it. So he's going to be on one Sunday on Instagram talking about that. But going back to the podcast stuff, um, are you familiar with Alex Hormozy? Have you come across this dude on YouTube? I he, have not. I've oh, not. He's, he's the god of like all things business, but in like a really healthy way. Um, yeah. And he said, he was giving a quote the other day in a podcast, and he said, most podcasts, like 95% of all podcasts ever started, never got past episode three. And oh so, my God. first of all, is incredible. If you want to be in the top 1% or 0.1% of all podcasts, the top 1%, you only need to do 20 episodes. And so he oh, said, wow. it's really easy to be successful because most people just give up like a few episodes in. So my advice would be, if you want into it, just get started. Like you, I just jump on Zoom, we're having a conversation, I hit record, I do a little bit of editing, but not much. And I just release it. And I've got to that point now where it doesn't matter if it gets 50 views or 500 views or 5,000 views, because um, I've really worked hard on but those 50 people. I know they got some value from it and that's okay. So I've had to really work on my ego because in the past I'm like, oh, this is, why is this performing so badly? So I think if you can <laughs> remove yourself from the um, metrics, and, and focus on the quality of the conversation. It doesn't really matter how well it does these days. I'm really kind of got through that. It's beautiful when they blow up, but actually it doesn't mean oh, yeah. by me. It's okay that it's done average or below average. Um, as long as those people have left a nice comment and said, thank you, that I, I learned something from that. And, and the other pick for me is like, I can't really express how much this has been such a gift because this has been my own private university like how else would i've got to have an interview an hour with you an hour with james nesta an hour with Belisa, well, two hours with james nesta an hour with Belissa Vranic, an hour with anders olsen all the world's greatest breathwork instructors where i'm actually asking them questions chatting with them and i'm learning firsthand and then the audience learns kind of secondhand from that and so and i feel like you learn differently versus when you listen versus when you ask somebody um sure yeah goes into the brain a little bit differently i think but there's this thing around like i've had my own private university so i've got an education now that few other people really will have the opportunity to get now you can still go and listen to them all and you can get that education to a degree but i think that's one of the things when i get clients they say to me i'm coming to you because you've spoken to everybody and so that's kind of one of the things <laughs> and a lot of them are like they're just busy it's like look six sessions give me everything i need to know to accomplish um, you know, whatever it is, problems in the bedroom or reducing anxiety or I need to increase focus or I'm feeling about burnout. And just give me it. Give me it in six weeks. Give me everything I need to know because I don't want to spend six months listening to 100 podcasts. I don't want to read 15 books. I just want you to give me the most important stuff. And that's, I think that's the benefit of like one-on-one -on -one coaching. I think that's a great point. There, we live in a time, unlike any other time in history, there is more information than there is time to learn it, right? Yeah, uh, the the vast amount of uh, of information at the average person's fingertips is is it really it boggles the mind just because there's just no way, right? There's just no way, and you know, yeah, um, I could go on PubMed and I could go on all of these amazing resources that you know, as as and, and we do oftentimes do that, but having a coach is so important because you have that you have the combination of information, right? And, and then there's experience and wisdom that that when you combine these things together, it's like, oh, wow. Yes. Okay, yeah, I got some really good advice there. I could have found out that, oh, yes, it's a fact that, you know, okay, we have turbinates and, oh, yes, you should breathe through the nose. Oh, okay, I can't. Now there's, but then getting some coaching on, okay, so when is the time whenever you can break that rule or when is the time whenever this, can, you know, that's that's epic. As you've been a coach, you know, I, I just want to come back to something that you said earlier and, 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 and those people who are listening might also feel like they're alone, right? 
I know that I felt the same way when I was starting out. It's like, you know, my wife was supportive, but she said, you know, it's kind of that weird thing that you do. And then, you know, over time it sort of, uh, it sort of grew on her, but as, as, as people are, are developing their, their coaching, as people are developing their practice, you know, wherever they are, because a lot of times we start as our own first mm-hmm. client. You know, you and I, we, we, we've, we've shared this. We often look at ourselves that we were our own first client. And then over time we've grown into, to coaching as people are, are getting into breath work just as a whole. Um, what would you say to, to people who may not have that much support? What would you say to, you know, Hey, I, you, we've been very fortunate. We've had supportive spouses and, but, but we know what it's like to be a satellite. What would you say in encouragement to, to folks that are starting? Look, I really lie about, um, so first of all, my mother-in-law does not know what the hell is going on with me. She's like, <laughs> breathe in and you breathe out. What the hell else is there to it? <laughs> it's always, she'll come in. What is he doing upstairs in that computer? Who's he talking uh-huh. to? It's interesting to see it through their eyes. Um, and same thing with, with Nina, actually, because when I went to go on this women off retreat, me and Nina have been dating a few months, and the retreat was like 2,000 euros, something like that. And she's like, yeah. and she knew where a pony it was, and she knows how much it costs to get a room in that hotel. It's like uh-huh. very, very, and they were like, they're ripping you off, you know? <laughs> and so she thought it was a big, big waste of money. And now she's like, it's a good idea, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was a good idea. So that's nice, but no, okay. So advice for people, that's interesting. So Patrick McHugh said something very interesting last year. He said that his business has grown tenfold in four years. The breathwork world is exploding right now. So there's never been a better time. You know, it's it's known as like the new yoga. We can do it sitting on our desk. We haven't got to get fancy equipment and pants and all that sort of stuff. Um, it can create immediate physiological uh, change in, in us. We, we know this. Um, and there's many, many different methods. And so, and there's many, many different schools as well. And so I think there's never been a better time to jump in. And if you're feeling like you're a bit lonely, um, I think it's about finding the communities. And so there's, there's a few things on Facebook. Um, there's, there's quite a few schools now. I know with the Oxygen Advantage, they do like meetups and stuff like that. I went to one last year. And so it's fun. Stuff. Interestingly, in my, in my hometown, um, there's a place called like a space to breathe or a place to breathe or something like this. Um, and that's really caught fire recently. It's like, there's lots of breath work going on there. I see all the social media posts and there's nothing three, four years ago. It's wonderful to see. And I don't live in a very hipster place at all. Trust me, it's really oh, hard. Yeah. It's really hard to get a good coffee around here. And I need like, good. <laughs> like they're giving you one of those little crappy cups with like, you know, splash it anyway. Um, <laughs> so I think, yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's, 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 it comes back to the thing is that how do you find your tribe? And can yeah. you find it digitally and can you find it locally? And if you can get a blend of the two, I think you're winning. I still don't think I've found my local tribe being totally brutally honest. Like I'm mm-hmm. 99% in the digital space. And so in my dream scenario, absolutely like what would be my vision in five years? It would be to own some sort of retreat somewhere, maybe in Poland or Portugal or somewhere like that. And just be in a, a community where there's like loads of other breathwork instructors, yoga instructors, um, and there's people coming, there's people coming to you and you'll, uh, that's, that's where I'm probably my happiest when I've done the festivals and the talks and stuff. And I'm around a group of people that, you know, first of all, you're the center of attention. So that's all people, that's beautiful. You know, <laughs> I was, I was bullied, I was bullied at school and I was not very popular. So I think like a lot of YouTubers kind of fall down that route of what I've spoken mm-hmm. to anyway. Yeah. And so, um, being so attention is lovely, but then also you get to teach, um, you get to be in this environment where everybody kind of gets what you're talking about. Um, yeah. and that's very nourishing. That's really, mm-hmm. really nourishing, like at many, many levels to be around people that kind of get that. So winding it back to answer your question, I think it's about trying to work out, can you do it locally? And if not, is there a place you can do it, uh, digitally? Um, and weaving it into the whole reason, I guess, one of the reasons we're talking, the breath source, uh, which if you haven't got yet, guys, you need to click on the link below, download get it. it. Yes. You get straight away. Me and Jesse both on there. There's loads of other beautiful, wonderful instructors on there. Um, that's going to have live classes soon as well. And so I've not really had these conversations at a very open level, but the way I see that evolving is I start to see there's going to be a nice community that forms around the breath source, either it's on Facebook or it's somewhere else. But I'd be very surprised in the next couple of years if there isn't a really strong community. There's already talk about retreats happening and all this sort of stuff. And so I actually see the breath source as like a really good hub for bringing all, because 
there's so many of us now that teach like you've got your style i've got my yeah. style michael bike's got a style great cause has got a style yeah all these wonderful people are bringing their communities together and we're kind of mission them all together and so we're all discovering i've learned so many different breathing techniques the, the whole career thing with cat Mc, Mc, mckelvin um yes and about careers and so it's it's educational for all of us so um a long answer apologies but i think that's the, probably the three things get the breath source out look online for stuff but try and find stuff in your local area go on meetup.com and all those sorts of things i can completely relate to you you know even though i've been professionally i guess doing this since 2016 yeah locally no uh -huh. uh, you know i clients yes uh, but having people that, Hey, let's, let's hang out and let's nerd out like you and I will do. And yeah. like the people on the breath source will do uh, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's, there's just, there's only a certain, I guess, percentage of the population that, that will dive into it that deeply. But I love the idea of the breath source. And this is of course, why this is why I got into it. This is why we're in, in it is, is that it is a collaboration and, I and it's not a, um, like this top-down thing where, you know, it's, it's okay. You, you all have to, it's really a big thing where it's like, we're all working together. We all have these meetings. We all get together. And I think that that's an important element for, uh, for at least as though you're in a community, you know, just doing what we're doing right now, being on a video call, uh, you know, when I, when we were kids, that was, that was like Star Trek stuff. Remember it was like, Someday the telephone will be connected to the TV. And so, so we've come a long way and, and it is, we, we have the capacity to, uh, to have those groupings and to find our tribe. So I, I love that. That's, that's some really solid advice. And as far as your, uh, your family goes, how do you take them with you or how, how do you do that? Do you, do you take them with you on, on retreats? Do you do a lot of retreats? How, tell me about your, you know, your day to day. Yeah. Let's know more so, about Mike. So I, I really began this like new phase of my like breathwork career, which was making it, you know, the whole reading on the car and having that conversation. It all happened during COVID. And ah. so I spent two years like making the podcast. But I never went out to the real world for two years. So this whole time, I'd never spoken to anybody really about it outside of, you know, the screen and, and the lens. <laughs> and then last year when it opened up, I got to go to James Lester's retreat. I was lucky enough to do a little bit of teaching there. That was amazing. Then I got to go to a retreat in uh, Corfu, a free dive retreat with Tom Zetas, the world's first guy oh, that nice. helped 10 minutes. Got to do some teaching there. That was incredible. Um, got to go to the Breath Festival, the UK's biggest breath festival, did some teaching there. Um, and then... The last one I did last year was Verve, and that was really cool. I'm going back to Verve again this year. Anyway, all that time, Nina was pregnant. So she couldn't come to Costa Rica. Oh. And she didn't go to the, the retreats. And got a dog as well. So, so far, it's gone from me in my room by myself, pandemic, <laughs> to me. But our mutual friend, Tom Granger, was at most of those things last year. So I think out of three out of four of those things I've just mentioned, Tom was with me the whole way. So we're like breath buddies, you know. We're oh, doing yeah. Together. So for for me, I don't, I honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to say you are, so you're both in the UK. Are you within driving distance of Tom? Yeah. Like less than two hours. Yeah. Okay. All right. So at least you've got, you've got at least a yeah. breath buddy that way. Quite a lot. Yeah. We'll do, we'll often do things that, although he's now got a sexy background. So for those that don't know, Tom. He does? did a book called Draw Breath. He also has Aria Breath, which is like the world's biggest music library. Um, and he looks a bit like Jesus, you know, he's a cool He dude. does. He has yeah. a biblical appearance. That's he true. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but he, he's great. He's, yeah, he's, he's our mutual friend um, with this. But yeah, we're, we're not too far away from each other. So that's been actually quite, actually, yeah, that has been quite helpful. Me and Tom having our, because we've got a separate business called Ads. And, uh, you, yes, you, I was wanting to get to that because that yeah. is exciting too, as yeah. well. Can you tell us more about Airheads? I, I want to yeah, uh, so, so dig deep main, into that. Main things, take a deep breath. That's my main channel. I really need a branding expert because I've got the breath cast, but should that be called Take a Deep Breath? I don't know. Anyway, so there's all this stuff going on. <laughs> Tom came to me about two, maybe not that long ago, about a year and a half ago, and was like, I think we should work together. I've got some ideas. Tom's got Brad, Tom's got the branding brain of a god. So he's like, he showed me this logo where it's like somebody's lungs, but it's also a head. And I was like, how did you make that happen? It's beautiful. <laughs> because airheads. I was like, that's genius. And he goes, and we would teach and we would complement each other's skills because I've got all the functional stuff. He's got all the coherence and all the 
uh, relaxation stuff. And, I'm like, and I don't know, there was just a good vibe. We just vibed. Yeah. Straight away. And I was like, stop it, let's do it. And then nothing really happened for a while because I think it's still pandemic here and a little bit of this. And then we did our first event in London last year. And it was the same bloody day that the rail strike happened. So almost oh. nobody turned up, which was fine. But we still got like 20 people. We said, look, just bring a friend. Just bring a friend. <laughs> go to the coffee shops. We'll come and learn about breathing. You know, we brought these people. <laughs> and we had a really good time. And then we did it. Then we switched to online and it just blew up. We got like 70 people turned up the first time. And then it's really grown from there. So that was, that's the Airheads workshops. And what we're doing here is all science-based information. You've been one of our special guests, as you know. Yeah. Um, we did the one day. Now we have like three tiers. So we have the one day workshops, which anybody can join. Then we have the advanced um, Airheads Advanced, which is a six or seven week, seven week program. Every Saturday you join Zoom and you get somebody like Jesse comes on. Um, we have Melissa Branich last time. We have Tom Zetas. We have the world's best breathwork people. And there's only 12 people in that group. So you got to ask questions and all that sort of stuff. And that was, it got great feedback. And then the big thing, so I do need to release this podcast now early because on the 25th of this month is the Airheads Masterclass. So what is that? That is a live breathwork program. And, you know, it's easy to go, oh, it's got the world's best people. It's got the world's best people. We asked everybody, like James Nestor, Bliss of Ralich, Patrick McEwen, Anders Olsen, Jesse, and, so, and they also, everyone said yes, which is just incredible so we are literally that is amazing together. yeah My, unbelievable still still like what everyone's coming to this course well, i thought we've got patrick or we've got a, uh you know a james that'd be incredible got every, got everybody so um so that course kicks off on the 25th tickets actually go on sale tomorrow which is the 13th of april um and it's limited so there's only only certain spaces but that's going to be incredible because it's every day is specifically been built up because like you i've done loads of these retreats where there's loads of speakers and they don't Everyone's talking about breath work, but it doesn't always um, can be quite confusing for people. Because like you just said, use the mouth, and he said use the nose, and this person saying never hyperventilate, and this one saying breathe really slow, it's <laughs> bad for you. And, and so what we've built is like every day it builds. So day one is all about the mechanics. So we've got the list of Ranich, like the world's one of the world's greatest biomechanics teachers coming in, teach us how to open everything up. You know, we've got mm. yourself in there. Then we've got like Nesta doing like a Q and A on day two. We've got on day and day two is all about the nervous system. Day three is all about breathing less to live longer. And the best people, you know, Anders, um, who has a CO2 suit he puts himself in, he's going to talk about, and he fills himself up with CO2, a bit like a bubble bubble person. Oh, nice. Incredible. And then, like, we move from there into intermittent hypoxia, you know, the Wim Hof esque mm. stuff and the alkaline breathing and all that jazz. Um, and then, oh, and we've got Tom Zetas doing breath holds. Then we move into the big stuff, conscious connected breathing. Um, and rebirthing, I'm going to tell my rebirthing story on there with the lady that took me through the rebirthing. And then we finish off with the future of breath work where Travis, our CEO of the breath source, yeah. is talking about the future of breath work, AI, apps. Because breath works is ancient practice, right? It's thousands of years old, but like everything in our lives, I know I saw your post about chat GPT. I want to talk to you about that at some point. <laughs> yeah. Things in our life, I really think are going to... I mean, it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. Far from perfect. I saw your thing about the, the sources being wrong, and I've seen that too. But I, I really think in the next two years, this world could be completely unrecognizable from where it is right now in like a, gr a brilliant way, but in like a terrifying way. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, so the last day is all about the future of breathwork. So that's Airheads. Um, and hopefully some people watching this will, will come and join us. Um, and it's going to be, I really think it's going to be a good course because it's step by step. And it's not like it's just me teaching it. It's like the best people in the world are teaching you how to breathe. That's why we've called it a masterclass. Yeah, and I I would imagine that this will not be the last time you do such an event. So if for some reason you're hearing this or you're watching this and it's this particular one's over, definitely check out the, uh, the Airheads uh, courses because they are absolutely fantastic. Achoo. And I can't wait. Like I, I'm part of it and I'm like, man, I can't wait all these names. I want to hear them speak too. Yes. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. And, and and really that brings me to some questions maybe, and I'm glad we were kind of edging that way anyway. What do you see as the future of breath work? Where are we headed? And and hey man, let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about the the future that we we may or may not like to see. What is it that that you you see uh, coming, and and how will breathwork play a role? Mm. So I do I do think like what's my son going to grow up into? You know, mm. because um, I've come from the call center world and the corporation world, and 
that's going to go now because the chat GPT, because like I managed people and don't get me wrong. I, I worked with some wonderful humans, but they all hated working on the phones and they never gave the right answers to the customers. And so <laughs> like chat GPT will do it properly. And I heard something they say, if you get pick up the phone and it's a human in like five years, like, oh shit, can you put me through to the computer, please? I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be so much better. And so yeah. I think with the breath, from what I'm hearing, there's two things. There's like the augmented reality slash virtual reality where you can put yourself into the suit, uh, or into the into the uh, glasses, and you can be transported to Bali, sitting on a lotus leaf, breathing in the most stunning environment ever where you've got haptic suits on and you're getting the perfect music and the perfect visuals and the perfect breath coach designed for you. So that's going to happen. That's already happening. It looks yeah. a bit crap with that. The other one, which is more interesting to me, is the AI watching you breathe through your phone, through the screen, seeing your breath rate, seeing which parts of you are breathing and giving you a bespoke breath exercise for what you need there and then. The guy I spoke to the other day, I'm um, still working out if he's going to do the podcast. He's just come back from Sweden where he's invested in the tech. He's saying, it won't just be that. The, 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 the camera will be knowing or, or, or the bio sensor on your wrist will know and it will start to release lavender incense in the room and it will make the light bulb go red and it will play Mozart. I'm just giving shit examples, yeah? But sure, yeah, yeah. Go with it. And the temperature will come down because it knows that you need to cool down a little bit. And then at the same time, it will start to play the music you need for the breathing exercise. And so that makes me go, ah, oh, shit, how's breathwork going to play a part for humans then in the future? Because we won't be able to compete. That's the thing, even with therapy. Um, hmm. So there's part of me going, there's going to be, there's going to be, and again, I'm more blind there, yeah? But I feel we'll branch <laughs> off, we'll branch off into probably two big groups. Those that are like, organic, touch the grass, I want daylight, I want to work with real humans, I don't even want to be on Zoom, I want to go work on a commune and be with humans. And then I think there'll be the vast majority that jump into this ready player one world um, because it's going to give them everything they need. You know, yeah. but then what, what's the consequences of that? You know, we've right. already got doom scrolling on our phones, <laughs> bad net posture, blue light infiltrating us. I don't know if you've gone down the earthing route, but when we're touching our phone and it's plugged in, we're filling ourselves up with electricity and there's nowhere for right. it to go. It's causing inflammation. So I'm like, but then will the AI know that? And it'll cause my ideas how to resolve that. It's it's terrifying and exciting, but I'm, I am embracing it right now. So I use chat. I'm dyslexic. I cannot put three sentences together in written form. But what I can mm. do now is I can go in there and I can write an email and I'll write it how I would write it. And I'll just go to chat to you. Can you just make this sound like an adult wrote this for me, please? And it will then spit <laughs> back out again for me. Um, and that, that's, that's been really helpful um, because that's been my biggest blocker is I've never been able to do written content. I can talk, yeah. I can film, but I, I don't. And whereas obviously you're an English professor, you've got this in spades, I'm sure. Um, but I've really struggled with that. Yeah, the, 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 the AI is fantastic. It really is interesting. Um, yeah, I, I recently made a post about this because I, I've been working on a side project and, and I, I'm a nerd for, I love writing books and, and it's just something I've, I, after I finished my first one, I swore I'd never do it again. And then I did a second one. Then I'm like, okay, I'm in love. And so I'm into it. But yeah, ChatGPT, uh, as it is now, you know, uh, it makes a lot of mistakes and uh, hey, it's technically an infant. So, yeah. and it's still able to run circles around most of the people that are using it as far as all this stuff. And so, yes, it makes mistakes. And yes, for right now, uh, you really do have to to watch it closely because, and you need to do your own research. That's, the, I guess, the lesson. Yeah. But, it, but I definitely see where you're, where you're going with that when it comes to um uh, the power of of ai and the and the power of of our technology so I, I know i've played around with virtual reality and there's some some breathwork stuff that some people have started to mess with yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just again it's i think it's important to remember it's just in the infancy and you know there was socrates you got to remember you know nowadays we, we like hey you should read books socrates said hey that's a new invention that is going to rot your mind right so I, I think a lot of times we look at new stuff and we're like, ah, it's going to rot your mind, but I would never give away my, my phone, right. As, as much damage as I'm sure as, that it does to me psychologically and, and physiologically, that's interesting. And, and as a person who I, I especially trust your, 
uh, analysis, especially after speaking to all of the people you've spoken to and and, and looking at all these things in the way you've, you've looked at it. Yeah. So that's awesome. So now, how can people, of course, people know how to get a hold of you, but this is technically at the end of a podcast, we always say, hey, how do we get a hold of you? What are some, if, if a person is looking to become one of your clients, let's suppose, yeah. uh, what would the process be for that? How um, how would you like people to get a hold of you? Um, and, and and then also um, maybe anything else you're working on, what would you like to share? Yeah, good. Um, so I'm going to, I actually, as I'm thinking about this whole podcast, I'm just going to release it tonight on the channel. Because Excellent. So much time says this stuff. So if you're watching this on the 12th of April, then uh, I've just literally recorded this. Um, you can still go ahead and <laughs> more because there's just too many time says to think. Um, okay, yeah. So first of all, there's 300 videos on my main channel. So you, you can go into the breathwork world for free. I, I've been the last seven years all about doing everything for free. So you you know you're in that uh, place where you don't have a lot of disposable income. You can go on there. And you can learn about all the different breathing techniques. You can watch all the podcasts for free with all the different experts and you can practice all the breathing exercises till they're all on there. Like I said, hundreds, hundreds of videos. Um, but for those that are looking for the more bespoke one-to-one, -one, and I said, I, I do two, maximum three clients a month because it's so intense. Um, it's six, it's six weeks, an hour a week with me plus homework. Um, you head over to my website, take a deep breath, uk. There's an apply to work with me button. There's a form to complete. And then we have like a 30 minute Zoom conversation, which is free just to, just to figure out, are we a good fit? Because you, you know, I need to be able to work with you. You need to be able to work with me. So quite selective these days who, who we work with, because it needs to, oh, I, the most important thing for me, the thing that keeps me up at night is I want my clients to get like rapid results really quick. I want them to have those life changing results. So, you know, it's the most, it's the most beautiful thing when somebody says, I feel better or, or that word. Mm. I was working with a lady that had so much pre-performance anxiety. Um, and we, we used the coherence. We used a load of different movement techniques. And she's like, I was too relaxed. And I was like, oh, <laughs> stress me out a little bit more now. I was like, don't worry, we can do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> and so that was, that was like one of the happiest moments of like last week or the week before. Or the guy that's like, he's like doing boxing and everyone's going, what drugs are you taking? He's like, no, man, I'm just doing the air. You know, so it's just, it's just that sort of stuff. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, so if someone's listening to this, um, I'm, I'm actually fully booked now for May. Um, I do have a couple of slots in June. So if you're interested in applying for some of those June slots, um, then yeah, you can, you can do that. Um, and then we can have a chat about it. Well, on the website, so you can do that there. But yeah, it is, it is my favorite thing, but it's also the most intense thing to do as well. Cause there's a lot of responsibility, right? You're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody. You've got to be there. You've got to be present for them. Um, so yeah, so you've got the YouTube channel, you've got that. And of course you've got them airheads. So airheadsmasterclass.com, which I'll, I'll link to if somebody wants to get a ticket, tickets on sale tomorrow. Um, first hundred people um, that uh, buy a ticket for that uh, with me, they get access to my um, functional breathing essentials course, which is on sale right now for $500. So first hundred people, massive upgrade straight away, just to give you that as well. And you can start learning. Before the master classes even begin, you've got a whole course you can go through just to just to you know keep your appetite going on, on breath work. But yeah, that's it really. So check out the free YouTube channel, which you're already on if you're watching this. But if you're listening to this, um, of course, you can jump on over to YouTube. Um, and then those that are wanting to take their breath work to the next level, please um, apply and let's let's have a Zoom conversation like this and have a chat and see if it fits. That's awesome. And and I just want to thank you for letting me come on your channel and have this conversation with you. You're a wealth of information and I would love to be one of your clients. So for those of you guys listening, um, one thing I, I will say is, is to book those things well in advance. Yeah, maybe he's he's booked all the way up through the next month, but but get your spot because it is well worth it. So guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Mike for having me as a guest um, host and uh, breathe well, everybody. Thanks so much. Good Thanks. night. And buy and download the breath source. Oh, yes. Meet us on the breath source. <laughs> 12,000 people almost now, which by the way, is freaking incredible. 12,000 yeah. people now. First, like, I think it was in the first like two weeks that happened. It's the fastest growing breath yes. of all time. Um, there's new content being uploaded 
all the time. I'm not putting any more new full breathwork exercise on my YouTube channel. They're all going in there. This podcast is going to go in there. Um, Dan Bazinet is in there with all his wood fire climbing and all Jesse's stuff's in there. So yeah. um, I sound a bit like a broken record, but like it's free to get started. It's beautiful. It's uh, loads of people coming together. Um, there's never been anything like this. It's not just like animated breathing bubbles. It's right, it's right. All, all these breathwork instructors giving their heart and soul and their mastery. You know, you've got people that have been in breathwork, like um, Ed Harold's been doing breathwork for like over 25 years, I think. He studied the Pranayamas and everything. You know, um, you've got. Um, the, the 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 zen guy jason campbell uh um, yes he's amazing the wisdom of that guy you know mm. he made me blew my mind because if you haven't seen this podcast yet i'm sorry i'm on a bit of a ramble i need to finish in a sec i, mean, hey, I love it about the different epochs in your life or the different areas of your life and you said like you know, when you get to 35 you kind of 35 36 you start to go through a bit of a change and then you get into your next epoch which is all about mastering it's like, oh that's where i feel i am right now and then as you uh-huh. get to about 55 you need to stop letting go because if you don't let go of like old people, old habits, old ideas, they're going to weigh you down and they're going to mess up the last epoch of your life, which is about giving back. So I think it's yes. from like 70 onwards. And I was like, I don't know, like, I don't know if there's any science to that, but it resonated so loud with me. It was deafening. I was like, that makes so much sense about how your life is. The amount of accumulated wisdom in this one app, really, if, if you just, you know, I've I've not gone through everybody's sessions yet, but I just sample a new breathmaster on a regular basis, and the music is amazing. Um, the sessions are incredible, and and it's not just any random breath worker who we just kind of grabbed off the street. You know, we really curated this, and yeah. I'm really proud to be in this with you, Mike, and then everybody else that's in it. I, I, these are people I'm happy to associate with. And, and that's, that's saying a lot. Uh, this is something that, that I think w- whenever you're really serious and passionate about it and, and you do this and it's your thing, uh, yeah. you don't want to just kind of say, yeah, whatever it's just do whatever everyone on this app. I really do I admire and, and I trust. So yeah, definitely go and check that out. It is free to download and it is inexpensive to become a member. So yeah. check it out. Yeah, and there's like a lifetime option at the minute, which is dirt cheap as well. You can just buy a lifetime access to it, yeah, and then forever. Which is just again the amount of that, like the amount of value in like something like that. It's just it's it's just not available. You know, the amount of hours of time that someone spent to create that breathing exercise, and you can have it for free for the rest of your life, well, forever. Very yeah. different. It's um, incredible, dude. Thank you very much. You've been you've been a wonderful host. You've been the best host <laughs> podcast, and I will definitely do it again some points i'll get you back on again at some point as well excellent sure. excellent it's always a pleasure mike when's your when's your books coming out can we talk about that my book yeah yeah so my book the uh the, the my next book the language of breath is coming out in october of 2023 and i will hey yes let's talk uh between now and then uh, yeah. so we can maybe talk about the book and then yeah. of course everybody listening or watching just um go as soon as as soon as you see it on my my feeds go pre-order it Yes. Well, I'll bug you about it. Yeah. I'll link it here as well. Cool. Awesome. All right, dude. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thanks. This has been a real pleasure to share some of this extra stuff. So thank you all. That one person that stayed all the way through till the end. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, dude. <laughs>